Ave Maria, greetings from the Tower of Lepanto. This is Father Angelo Mary for Standing Fast, a weekly commentary on Catholic life in the public square. A while back in this series, I tried to answer the question, what is chivalry? Well, today I'd like to answer the question, what is Marian chivalry? But first I'd like to review a little bit uh, what chivalry is. And there's a great definition uh, by a man named Kellum Henry Digby, from a book called uh, the, the Maxims of Christian Chivalry, which is still in print, in which he says, Chivalry is only a name for that general spirit or state of mind which disposes men to heroic and generous actions and keeps them conversant with all that is beautiful and sublime in the intellectual and moral world. So chivalry in that spirit of militant uh, love for truth and goodness raises the standard of behavior and commits men to work, to suffer, and even to die for what is right. So I've talked in the past about the virtues of chivalry, uh, fidelity, honesty, courtesy, uh, courage, um, and generosity. These all help men to fight for what is right, what is true, what is good, to be con conversant with all that is beautiful and sublime in the intellectual and moral world and to help them dis dispose and, and, dis and it disposes them, as Digby says, to heroic and generous actions in that regard. So that's what chivalry is. So what is Marian chivalry? Well, in reality, what I'm trying to do is just simply uh, help people recognize that the origins of Christian chivalry are in fact Marian. They are tied back to devotion to Our Lady because Our Lady for Catholics represents everything that is beautiful and sublime in the intellectual and moral world. And in fact, as I've pointed out in other uh, segments of this series, uh, the Christian knights uh, had a great love for Our Lady. Saint uh, Louis of France, for example, Saint Ignatius of Loyola, Saint uh, Thomas More, um, and even uh, the Knights uh, Templar professed their vows, not only to God, but to Our Lady St. Mary. Because Our Lady really and truly represents the, what is true, good, and beautiful, what is uh, sublime in the intellectual uh, and moral world. And great saints like St. Saint Maximilian Kolbe recognized this and recognized uh, how from the very beginning uh, God promised to send his son through the woman in order to defeat Satan. As soon as our first parents fell from grace, God promised that there would be a redeemer. I'll put enmity between you and the woman, between your seed and hers. She will crush your head and you will strike at her heel. The woman is promised. And it's in the context of a war that the woman is promised. And it's a war which is largely going to be faced uh, by, by men. I'm not neglecting the role that women have to play in general, but men can appreciate the bellicose language of sacred scripture. And Our Lady is there at the heart of it because she is the one who brings Jesus into the world. She is the one who restores sanity to human life. She is the one who brings grace and honor back into human life because she has cooperated with God's plan and she has brought the child who will save us, Emmanuel, uh, into the world. And she, more than anyone else, is the strong woman, the courageous woman who is faithful to our Lord and walks with him all the way to Calvary and stands with him at the foot of the cross. And so she represents and personifies and embodies truly within herself everything that we should love everything that we should desire, everything that we should want to imitate. And so uh, devotion to Our Lady can be conceived really and truly as a form of chivalry. Uh, we can consecrate ourselves to Our Lady. We can give ourselves over to her as our mother, our bride, in a sense that I had speak, spoken about in, a, in, a, in the last um, one of the last uh, segments here, and queen, and uh, recognize through her uh, that we have at our fingertips everything that we need 
to fight for the kingdom of God. Devotion to Our Lady is truly chivalrous. Uh, and uh, by loving her, we learn how to become true knights. We learn how to become like Jesus Christ, who is, in reality, the ideal of all knighthood. And so chivalry, in its essence, is Christian. It's not pagan or neo-pagan. It's Christian. And by its nature, it is therefore also Marian. And so let us uh, recognize that and try to recapture the true virtues of chivalry that are only going to be there for us if we're willing to humble ourselves and imitate Jesus by having Our Lady as our mother. So that's Marian chivalry, and I'm Father Angela for Standing Fast. Until next time, keep the faith and Ave Maria.